Hi, my friend, Sam Villa here. How many times have we had a guest sit on our chair and we ask them, which side do you part your hair? Sometimes they might say, I part on the left and sometimes I will part on the right. It just, feel, it just depends upon how I feel that day. So I want to share with you a great technique where you can go in and actually cut it to swing left to right or right to left. We're going to take a triangle on both sides. So let's locate these natural parts on the left side and on the right side. Comb the hair diagonally back to the top of the crown. Here, we're going to push, and you can start to see where that hair splits. That tells me that's where that hair is going to part naturally on the left side. Now let's do the same thing on the right side. We come back, we comb, we push, and you can start to see that hair split. That tells me, once again, where it's going to part on this side. That's going to give you this triangle section that you see here. This is the area we're going to cut. We're going to take the rest of the hair, and we're going to isolate that with our dry cutting clip that has a silicone elastic band that will keep the pressure of the clip off the hair so it doesn't create a mark from the clip. They're great when you're dry cutting. Coming through, notice when I place the clip in, I'm not going down with it. I'm going to encourage you to take the clip pointed up, that way the hair is captured into the clip. Now we're ready to cut. We're going to part this in the center so that we create the balance of what we're going to do. We're going to create that balance on both sides, left and right. I have where the both natural parts are for left side and right side. We're going to elevate the hair in a diagonal fashion. We're going to come through and we're going to work with our reversible blending shear when we do this technique. And I don't want you to panic when you see how I'm going to use the tool. I want to create a really soft edge. If I come in here and cut a blunt line, it's going to add weight to it. It's not going to have the ability to swing and stay over where I want. So I want to create a really soft edge. We're going to create that soft edge by working with a reversible blending shear. Also, I know that if I cut this short to long this way, it's going to have a natural common tendency to swing and move from right to left. So we're going to cut a diagonal line that goes short to long this way. Remember, we want it soft. So we're going to come through. I want that to be about lip area. So notice how before I cut, I drop it down to that lip. Once we're here, we're going to elevate diagonally. Notice how I take the comb underneath to bring the elevation up, rather than the combing angle being on top and trying to swing it up. Comb from underneath, bring it up in a diagonal fashion. We elevate diagonally because if we know we elevate above, above a horizontal line, it's going to fall softer. My lip is my guide. Now I'm taste the, the blunt blade is going to go on the bottom, but I want a soft edge, so I'm going to come through and I'm going to weave the blunt blade through. I'm going to close. You've maybe seen me do this before, but look how I'm using the technique now to release weight and now to release the length. Now when I comb through this, Let's take a look at what happened. Watch when I comb through this, I come through in a vertical fashion. Because that hair has been pushed back, it's got some tangles in it. Now once I get those out, now come through with your comb and comb through. Now when we release this section, watch how it's going to fall from short to long, but look how soft it's falling, short to long. That's going to have the ability to move from right to left. Now we're going to come through on the opposite side, we're going to repeat the same procedure. We're going to take a small slice of what we just created. We're going to use that as a guide. We come up. I'm looking for that fall slice. There it is up on the top. There's where that length is. Look how the comb comes out to that. Now once we're here, we're ready to cut. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the blunt blade, place it. Now weave it like you're doing a highlight. Okay, now close and backstroke. Now the reason we're backstroking, because as I backstroke, that hair that I'm holding on to that I wove is slipping and moving back. So I'm getting variations of length instead of a blunt textured edge by simply pushing back. I know it looks kind of like, it looks like it's harsh on the hair, but it's the priority of getting the technique to work. And I know that I'm working with a reversible blender. It allows me to get a nice clean cut. Now we're going to come through, see how that's tangled, see why I go in, I go vertical and I comb that out with just one single tooth. Once I got those tangles out, now I can come through. Now watch what I'm going to end up with. I should end up with a point and a triangle that does this. Now with that triangle in that position, now when I take the hair and I sweep it this direction, watch how that hair moves to that side. When we come over and she wants to sweep it one day, the next direction, 
look how it sweeps to the opposite side. So once again, it's a great way to go in there and satisfy the client that wants to go in there and move her hair from one side to the opposite side. And remember, you know diagonal lines will get that hair to move. But what we shared with you is how to work for the left natural side part, right natural side part, and working with the reversible blender gives you that soft edge, elevating, cutting horizontally. By elevating, it's going to drop into a diagonal position so you get the triangle. I want to thank you so much, my friends, for watching. And remember, at Sam Via, we'll keep putting it out there to help you be successful behind the chair.